The first step in understanding holomorphisms between matrix Lie groups is to understand the one parameter subgroups of a, a matrix Lie group G. So what is that? Well, definition, a one parameter subgroup of a matrix group G is a smooth holomorphism from the additive group of real numbers to G. In other words, it's a map F such that F of, uh, let me call it T1 plus T2, I'm thinking of R as kind of being time, equals F T1 times F T2. Okay, so I'm mixing slightly the um, group operator here. So on R it's addition, so inside the brackets it's add, and outside well, we've got matrices, we're multiplying them together. And we also want F of zero is the identity matrix. So it's called a one parameter subgroup because it's got one parameter, which is this real number. And um, the image of this homomorphism is a subgroup. So let me give you an example. For any element X in the Lie algebra of G, the map F of T equals X T X is a one parameter subgroup. Proof? Well, um, exp t1 x times exp t2 x equals, um, well, if you remember the properties of the exponential map, if two matrices can meet with one another, then we have the usual law of logarithms. So this should be exp t1 x plus t2 x because t1 x and t2 x commute with one another. t1, t2 are just numbers. We can just take them out of this Lie bracket by, by linearity. And so we just get t1, t2 x bracket x, which is zero. So there's no correction terms in the baker campbell hausdorff formula. And this is exp of t1 plus t2 x. And this is exactly saying that f of t1 t plus t2 equals f of t1 times f of t2. Moreover, x of 0 times x equals x of 0. That's the identity matrix. So this is one way of getting one parameter subgroups. And it turns out it's the only way. So any one parameter subgroup F from R to G has this form, i.e. there exists an X in the Lie algebra such that F of T equals X T X. Now this is actually going to be our first really non-trivial use of calculus, I think. So let's prove this. What does it mean for F to be a homomorphism? It means that F of S plus T is F of S times F of T. And it means that F of zero is the identity matrix. What we're going to do is we're going to differentiate this first equation with respect to S at S equals zero. And that's going to give us a differential equation. And this is going to give us an initial condition. So let's see how this works. If I differentiate the, um, let's see, let's differentiate the left-hand side first. So using the chain rule, if I differentiate F of S plus T at S equals zero, what I get is the derivative of F evaluated at t. So I'm writing f dot for the derivative. Um, so I just get f dot at 
s plus t, but s is zero, so I get f dotted s plus uh, t. And if I differentiate the right-hand side, I get f dot at zero times f of t. Because t is constant when I'm differentiating with respect to s. So um, I just get f dot at zero times f of t. Now this is a differential equation in, a, in t. Ordinary differential equation satisfied by f. And this first guy is an initial condition, f of zero is the identity. So there's a theorem called the existence and uniqueness theorem for ordinary differential equations that says a differential equation of this form has a solution. And, you know, if I specify the initial condition, that specifies the solution uniquely. So this ODE, ordinary differential equation, has a unique solution by general theory of ordinary differential equations. And it turns out that the solution is uh, given by the exponential map. So it has a unique solution. We observe that exp t f dot zero is a solution that satisfies this initial condition. Um, therefore, it is the unique solution. So this tells us f of t has to be equal to this particular solution. So let's check why is this a solution? Well, because when I differentiate this expression with respect to t, I just bring down a factor of f dot, and that's exactly what this differential equation is saying happens. And if I set t equal to zero, I just get the identity matrix. So we're using this non-trivial result from differential equations that an ordinary differential equation has a unique solution. In fact, if you hadn't already constructed the exponential map, this strategy would construct it for you because it would be the unique solution of this differential equation. And actually that is how you construct the exponential map for Lie groups in general, if you don't have matrix multiplication, sort of matrix matrices to work with.